We're going to start off today's video with a look at a church. It's called Mount Hermon Baptist Church in Clarksville, Tennessee, and it played a part in the life and death of a country music star. I'm talking about Lonnie Melvin Tillis, better known as Mel Tillis. And the reason I say it played a part in life is because he attended this church and he owned a large uh, farm in uh, nearby town, which is uh, Ashland City, Tennessee, and it's just a few miles up the road. And when I say I uh, played a part in his death, Mel's uh, funeral was held in this church. The cemetery that uh, Mel Tillis is buried in is just uh, located just behind the church, and you can uh, get to the cemetery on either side of the church. There's a road and then through the parking lot road there. Uh, and it is a very small cemetery compared to what you would think for a country music legend such as he. Mel Tillis uh, was born in Florida and he would end up uh, dying in Florida. He owned a large uh, ranch there uh, in um, Silver Springs, Florida, and that's where he passed away at. But he'd spent many years and he owned property up here. Uh, they said it's over 200 acres and it had several houses located on the property. So let's head out to the cemetery and see if we can find Mel Tillis' grave. As I mentioned, uh, Mel owned property in uh, both Tennessee and Florida. He would also have uh, two funeral services, one in Florida a couple of days before he had the funeral uh, here at the Mount Hermon Baptist Church in Clarksville, Tennessee. As you look ahead, you can see uh, a tombstone with the, the uh, name Tillis on it. And uh, I'd like to mention that uh, uh, Mel was not only a good singer, but he was a songwriter, and uh, he was uh, probably got his start mainly in songwriting before he became the singer. And uh, Mel uh, would write songs. Uh, he wrote the uh, uh, hit, became a hit for K Kenny Rogers in first edition, Ruby Don't Take Your Love to Town, and he co-wrote Bobby Bear's hit song, uh, Detroit City. So it would also earn him an induction into the Songwriters Hall of Fame. And of course, with his singing being so good, he was inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame. So now let's take a closer look at uh, Mel Tillis' marker. And uh, on that has a nice writing. It says, he generously shared his gifts in songs, stories, and humor. He leaves a legacy of love and laughter that will never die, forever cherished by his family, band, friends, and fans. Rest in peace. Mel Tillis uh, had six children, and I'm sure everyone uh, that is a Mel Tillis fan knows that his daughter, Pam Tillis, has done real well on the country music charts. But his other children uh, had been into uh, singing, too. When he owned a, a theater in Branson, Missouri, they, you know, performed with him. But uh, his son and uh, his daughters, Carrie and Cindy, also, I think, have made some recordings. And next to Mel's grave is that of Doris Yvonne Tillis. She was Mel's first wife, and she's the mother of uh, five of his six children. That included uh, Pam Tillis. So now let's uh, take a look uh, down the line here and see who else is buried in this row. You're looking at John P. Birdshaw, Sr., and uh, if that stands for John Philip, uh, he, of course, you could tell by the, the emblem there, he was in the Army, but he also was the ranch manager for Mel Tillis here in Tennessee. And uh, this is the uh, son of uh, him and his wife, which is Ima Jean Tillis Birdshaw. So uh, his uh, ranch manager was also his brother-in-law, as this is his sister's uh, marker. As I was uh, heading down to see Mel Tillis's marker, I noticed some other uh, Tillis's uh, buried one row up for him. Uh, so let me step back a few steps and uh, see who they are, and then we'll come back and take another look at uh, Mel's grave. 
The first one you see here is Crystal Lee Tillis Barton. Uh, she was a niece of uh, Males and she was a daughter of Richard Tillis. Next to her is buried Burma Rogers Tillis and she was Mel's mother and uh, she lived her latter years here in Tennessee uh, near him and uh, his father is buried in Florida, I will add. This is uh, Richard Lee Tillis, that's Mel's brother. It's got a nickname on there, Bread Man, and I'll tell you a little story about that in just a second. But uh, Richard did a lot of traveling on the bus and working at the theater uh, in uh, Branson, Missouri with Mel. And uh, Joanna Dawn uh, Tillis is uh, one of Richard's daughter. And it's, if you look, it's so close to his mother's grave, I just wonder if he was cremated or not. Not sure on that. But the nickname Breadman stuck to him because in his younger years, he would work in Florida uh, at a bakery that his father owned, and he would deliver bread, and thus he got the nickname Breadman. I'll also add, speaking of uh, bread, uh, that if you notice, Mel had a, a military uh, emblem on, uh, with a flag on his grave, and uh, Mel was in the United States Air Force, and in, in that, he was a baker. As we uh, take another look at Mel Tillis's marker and around a little bit in the cemetery, uh, I don't need to probably mention that everybody knew that Mel Tillis uh, would stutter when he would talk, and he ended up uh, getting this uh, speech impediment because of him having malaria when he was uh, in his early years. But when he sang, you did not uh, hear any stuttering in that. So. It just was a, it meant to be a uh, musician for sure. Well, I've already mentioned that he was a singer and a songwriter, but he also did some acting. And I'd like to say in a couple of movies, uh, like Smokey and the Bandit 2 and The Cannonball Run, uh, he also had uh, songs that would uh, be in those movies. I'll mention a couple of more things as we look at the uh, back of uh, Mel's and his first wife's uh, tombstones that uh, things about Mel Tillis that you may or may not have known. His first band, or at least his early band, was called the Westerners. But for many, many years uh, at the end of his life, his band was called the Statesiders Band. Mel Tillis would also write his autobiography, and it was called The Stuttering Boy. Another thing about Mel Tillis that uh, was kind of a surprise to me and that was that Mel Tillis was a good painter. Uh, he had uh, his paintings and prints made, uh, and uh, when they were sold, he gave lots of uh, the money or all the money to the Shriners uh, Children's Hospital, they say. So, as we take a final look at that, we'll head on out, and uh, as we get toward the gate, it's kind of interesting, the uh, post they have is made out of concrete with uh, crosses on it, most time you just see wood posts for the fence or either a metal post. And I thought I'd give you a look at the back of the church uh, instead of just uh, the front that we'd seen when we came in to show you that the road does wind around uh, to the cemetery from uh, the church. And uh, we'll leave here and head over to where I found out that uh, Mel Tillis uh, had his uh, farm or ranch, you might want to call it, uh, in this area. And we're passing uh, an area here that uh, has a, a lake or pond or something there. And you start seeing these black fences. And I think that was the start of part of his land. He owned uh, not only one section that they said he had like four houses on, but he had bought another section across. And we passed by something that looked like grapevines growing. And to me, that looked almost like a... Uh, grape uh, press up there on that hillside. And off at a distance we can see several houses. I don't know if we're going to be able to get close to it or not, but we'll try and see. But uh, this stands the reason this may be part of the farmland here as uh, there's house after house there. And I think maybe his mother maybe lived uh, in that one of those houses. Or she lived close by, especially with her being, up being buried uh, near him, and there's a, one of the houses. Uh, also, I read that uh, 
he had uh, his uh, brother and law and sister may have uh, lived in one of the houses. And when I talked to one of the locals, they said that uh, what we're looking at now, uh, a horse or a mule or donkey or whatever you may want to call it, this uh, weird looking art that Mel Tillis had made. Well, we pulled up in the drive X area thinking we might could get all the way down the road because uh, there was uh, several mailboxes out front, but it is gated as you can see here. And they said Mel had a house way down the road. And as we back out, we get to see another view of the, the famous uh, art looks like. And we, <clears throat> we saw right across that, the, speaking of the mailboxes, and uh, didn't kind of symbolize, symbolize it, uh, it is on Tillis Lane. So anyway, he was supposedly living in the one that was called 105 uh, Tillis Lane. Uh, thank you so much for watching my video. Hope you have a blessed day.